June 2019, question 1. Engineers use the sine function when plotting alternating current waveforms. Draw the waveform to represent the function y equals sine theta, where theta is an angle between 0 degrees to 360 degrees. Okay, units of degrees, good to know. You should include labels and axis values on your graph. Okay, rather than draw this live, Blue Peter style, here's one that I made earlier. So, let's have a look at what it's got. First of all, the maximum point here is above 90 and goes as high as 1. And both of those values can be indicated to show the position of that maximum. In the same way, this minimum here lines up with 260 and negative 1. And make sure it goes down to the right depth and up to the right height and that those are labelled. Also worth noting, I've got a consistent scale on this axis. There's three squares here up to one, and from zero there's three squares down. Now, horizontally it doesn't have to be the same as vertically, but horizontally each step needs to be the same as the other horizontal steps. So if it's 90 here, that's three squares, another 90 to 180, is also three squares, another 90 to 270, another 90 to 360. You can see I've also labelled my axes, theta in degrees and y. And that is what we need for this. What else might you see in the exam? You might be asked to give a cosine graph, they might give a different range of values, you might be asked to use radians. But we've covered all that in class, so hopefully you'll be prepared for that. But for this question, that's what we need. Question two. The diagram shows the cross section of an extrusion with a uniform thickness of four millimeters. Okay, so millimeters will be our units for this. Uniform thickness, so that means this distance here, that's four millimeters, but we also know this thickness here is also four millimeters and, and this one as well. We're asked to calculate the area so given that we're using millimetres, that will be millimetres squared for answer of the extrusion. Now, this is a topic known as compound area. This isn't a standard shape. It's not a rectangle or a circle or a triangle. It's made up of bits. It's like a compound. Uh, these bits are stuck together. So if we want to work it out, one way is we can split it into the separate parts. And there's lots of different ways that we could split this. I'm going to split it here. This rectangle here has got a height of 24 and a width of 4 because of all the thicknesses are 4. So the area of this would be 24 millimetres times by 4 millimetres. And this one on the other side is the same. So I'm going to just double that to get both of those. That then leaves me with this part here, which has got a width of 16 and a thickness of 4. So we need to add that on as well. 16 times 4. So let's check this over. This rectangle here is 24 by 4. That's what I've got there. The other side is identical, so I've doubled it to get twice the value. And then I'm adding on this extra part here, which is 16 by 4. Putting that into my calculator is the next step. 24 times 4 times 2 plus 16 times 4. And that's given me 256. No need to round that. But when I put it on the answer line at the bottom, I will include those units I mentioned earlier. 256 millimetres squared. It's an area, so the units are squared. And the question is using millimetres, so it's millimetres squared. And that is question two. Question three. The length of time an alarm sounds is represented by the formula. And that's actually an L. Bad choice of font, because it looks like a one or an I, but it's the length, so it's L. L equals N squared, and that's all being cubed where L is the length of time in milliseconds and N is the number of activations. 
simplify the formula using one law of indices. Well, I can see which index law it would need to be. It's the one where you've got an index inside and another one outside the brackets. So let's write L equals N squared cubed. Now, personally, I would just then simplify that as N to the power six, but I want to spell it out to make sure I'm showing enough working to get the marks. And the rule is that you times them. So I've just shown that as additional working out. And there it is, L equals N to the power six. Now, if you thought that was an I and you wrote it as an I, that wouldn't cost you any marks. If you thought it was a one and you wrote it as a one, potentially you might be, I don't know, you'll probably get away with it because that looks like a one. So they just assume that was, you meant the same thing. But if you try to use some calculations involving the number one, that could have cost you some marks. Okay, I'll put that on the answer line there. Okay, for the next part, we are asked to calculate the value of L when N equals four. In order to do this, there's two things that I need to do. The first thing is N is four. I need to substitute this into this equation here. And the next thing is to remember the units that we're using. That was why I underlined them as a reminder. So L equals four to the power six. Four to the power six, 4,096. There's no need to round that. but we do need to include units, milliseconds. And that is question three. Question four, the diagram shows a triangular ledge on a building. Here's the diagram. And yep, that's a triangle. Okay, so we've got some dimensions on here, an uh, unknown dimension and an angle. Looking at this, it's pretty obvious it's not a right angle triangle. So we're going to think, to think about our two alternative methods, the sine rule and the cosine rule. But before we decide, let's just check what it's asking us to do. It wants us to calculate the length of side A, and that's side A here. So we've related the text to the diagram. Let's have a look. Side A. Have we got a pair of opposite sides and angles? Well, we've got that, that's a pair. That's a, a, a side and an angle, and they're opposite. But we haven't got any of the other angles, so we can't use the sine rule that's all about opposites. But is this angle included? Well, yes, the two lengths either side of it are given. So because this is an included angle, we can use the cosine rule. And in fact, identifying that, putting the cosine rule down is the first mark. So you can get that first mark simply by writing out the formula that's given in the formula sheet. Doing that gets you the first mark for identifying that you need to use the cosine rule, choosing the right tool for the job. The second mark you can get for substituting in the values. Now A is simply A. And remember here, the convention for triangle notation is that the opposite angles have the same letter as the side that they're opposite, but the angle to capital. And A is this one. So that fits quite nicely actually for us, but just check that in any other questions. So I'm gonna substitute in the values that I know. One thing to note is B and C, doesn't really matter which way around they are in this case, because they're both here on the same side of the equation. Um, A is the one that needs to be off by itself. Okay, so A, you'll notice I've left the squared off. I'm actually going to square root both sides and get a second mark at the same time for the rearrangement. So B, I'll call that 4, and that's being squared, 
plus c which is 6 and that's also being squared minus 2 times 4 times 6 for b and c again times by the cosine of 25 degrees and I'll just make sure the vinculum on my root covers all of that some people stop short with their square roots. You need to cover everything that's being square rooted, otherwise, well, the answer will be wrong. So here, first mark for the formula, second mark for substituting, third mark for um, rearranging. And now if I put that into the calculator, I'll get a fourth and final mark for my answer, provided I remember to include the units of metres. So let's get the calculator out, clear the last one. Okay, so I've got square root 4 squared plus 6 squared minus 2 times 4 times 6. I'm just checking I'm typing this in correctly as I go. Time is by cosine and at this point, let's just double check. Yes, I'm in degrees, not radians. Cosine of 25 degrees. My square root covers all of that, so I hit equals and I get 2.9150 etc. Which on the answer line, I will round to 2.92 meters to three significant figures. And that is question four. Question five, a rocket follows a path represented by the equation h equals negative four t squared plus 24 t, where t equals the time in seconds, those are our units, and h equals the height above ground, h, that's h there, there's t there. Okay, let's see what they want us to do. Find by factorization the two times, if you look down here, there are two times they've asked for in the answer line, when the rocket is at a height of 32 metres. So, first thing to note, we have to be using factorization, not any other method for solving. We can't use the formula, we have to use factorization. Secondly, our answer will be in seconds because we're finding times, two of them, with units in seconds. So we mustn't forget those in our answer. And then there's this extra information here. And this gives us our first step. The height is 32. H is 32. We have to substitute H equals 32. So let's do that as our first step of working. I've written this out, but I've substituted h equals 32. Now, in order to factorise, I need to make this equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides. And there's my quadratic. It's equal to 0. So it's ready to be factorised. But I'm going to make my life a little bit easier. I've noticed that I can divide this by 4, I can divide this by 4, and I can divide this by 4. In fact, I'm going to make it even easier, and I'm going to divide each of those by negative 4. 0 divided by negative 4 is still 0. Negative 4 divided by negative 4, that's just one of them. Positive 24 divided by negative 4 gives me negative 6. And don't forget the variable t. Negative 32 divided by negative 4 gives me positive 8. And since I divided both the left and everything on the right, therefore all of the right, by the same thing, the equation is still equal. That's just simplified the maths I've now got to do, because in order to factorise this into paired brackets, 
I need to come up with two numbers to go in the brackets with the t's such that they multiply to give me 8 but they add up to give me negative 6. Well if they're going to multiply to give me a positive number they have to either both be negative or both be positive. And if they're both positive, there's no way they're going to add up to negative 6, so they must both be negative. And the options are 2 and 4, really. Negative 2 times negative 4 gives me positive 8, and negative 2 plus negative 4 gives me negative 6. So this is my factorization. You can check it by expanding if you want to. t times t is t squared. t times negative 4, that's negative 4t. Negative 2 times t, that's another negative 2t, which totals negative 6t. And negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. So, if this times this equals 0, then this could be 0, because 0 times by anything gives me 0. Let's make a note of that. Equally, this could be 0. So, I'm going to add 2 to this side, and that gives me t equals 2. And I'm going to add 4 in this equation to both sides, and that gives me t equals 4. And those are my two answers that I'll put down in the number line, but not forgetting to include the units. And if I wanted to check this, I could put some version of this into my calculator. I could use, well I can't really use this because I've not substituted the 32 yet, and in the calculator they don't like us having the, they like it to be equal to zero, so I'd, this would be the first version that I could use. I mean I could put this in, but I've manipulated that so there might have been a mistake here. So if I start with the earliest available version, let's put that in the calculator to check it. And the menu for checking is that option there, A, equation. It's a polynomial, and it's a quadratic, so that's going to be degree 2. And I want to have negative 4, 24, and negative 32. And I get my two answers of 4 and 2. So I've checked that. Alternatively, I could just try substituting 2 into here and see what I get. I'll do that in the regular calculation mode. If I've got negative 4 times by t squared, if t is 2, and then I'm going to add 24 times and t is 2. So you can see this is the same as this equation but I've put the 2 in and if I had equals I should get 32 which is what they tell us we should have. Now I substitute into brackets because I wanted to go back and remember where I could put in my other solution. And yep I get 32 again so it works for both of my values. So I have triple checked this, which you can do if you've got time in the exam, or you can just do it one of the two ways I showed you. And that is section A.